Guess we forgot to bring the pellets. Twat. Hey guys, it's Robin here from Team Foxer, and as you can see, I've come to top up and observe my squirrel feeder. But that's not what today's video is about. In today's episode, I shoot an old milk jug at 400 yards. Smack in the middle. That's smack in the middle, that. I go old school with some new kit. And I make a fox go bump in the night. But before all of that, I'm taking a trip up north to go and check out some of the latest thermal and night vision kit to see what all the fuss is about. Quick fuel stop. Three weeks later. We've hit the A1, but join the sunshine and the travel over. We've got about half an hour and we'll be there. Beautiful day, beautiful day. Quite looking forward to seeing what sort of kit we've got on offer. Have reporting back as to probably what will be my next purchase in terms of taking my foxing up to that next level. Welcome to Doncaster everybody. I've got some back on. So that day I arrived in Doncaster a little early to meet up with a couple of the chaps for a quick bit of long range shooting with a couple of 6.5 Creedmoors. We put the targets down range, it was actually 404 yards to the target and the shooting platform would be this extremely comfortable yet state of the art caravan. So this is Mark's uh, Kershaw custom built rifle topped off with a Swosky scope uh, and it's got an incredibly light trigger as well, as I soon found out. I must say, although it's a stunning rifle, I uh, actually preferred the Accuracy International uh, from his mate there. And this is me taking uh, a long range shot with this beast. Loading a fucking 50 cal in it with these. There's a bit of junk in it. <laughs> I'm going to go for the uh, the that's, bottle. It's yeah. supposed to be in Barcelona right. this week, yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it wobbling? I've just come back from Lanzarote yesterday, last night. Yeah. Smack in the middle. That's smack in the middle, that. So after the fun and frolics from earlier in the day, and a nice pub lunch later, we go back to the event to see some of the latest thermal kit brought along by Thomas Jacks and Nightsight. And I must say guys, if you ever get the chance to go to one of these events, please do so. It's much better looking at this kit in a real life scenario than it is from the confines within a show environment. So my conclusion from the demo evening, well first of all look, if you get a chance to go along to one of these demo evenings then I would strongly recommend it. I think it's far greater that you can actually play with this kit in the field looking at real life targets um, at real life distances than it is in a hall. Um, my conclusion from the evening was the best thermal scope on the market at the minute it has to be the Pulsar Thermion. It's a phenomenal piece of kit, extremely clear, and I would feel quite comfortable IDing stuff 
um, probably out to a couple of hundred yards with that, no problem. From a spotter perspective, and this is really what I wanted to do um, going to this evening, was I really wanted to see the difference between the Pulsar Thermal Kit on the market and the new Night Pearl range from Nights Out. Now they very kindly, after the event, have lent me the Scops 35 Pro, which I think, because it's the mid-range unit, offers the kind of best of everything uh, at its price point. At around 2200 quid. It's not a cheap piece of kit, but it is feature packed, um, and I'll give you a little. I'll give you a couple of the snippets that I've been able to use with it so far. But I am going out tonight with the guys from MGR Guns, so hopefully you can see a bit more footage in an up and coming video. And I'll also give you a more detailed review of this unit. I've got some footage uh, which I'll show you now. The difference here uh, between me looking across some cover just on the farm around the corner here um, through the Scops 35. Here you can see the hair stand out incredibly well versus the night sight. So as you look at it uh, with the night sight here you can see a couple of the hairs um, when you catch their eyes and stuff but as you can see compared to the thermal unit you can't see anywhere near the amount of life that there is around. The range on this thing is absolutely phenomenal. I, I observed uh, a roe deer uh, on the riverbank a good couple of hundred yards away and it stood out like a sore thumb. Again when I then flicked over to the night site to try and find it I couldn't actually see it the first time I was looking, uh, so I put the extra IR on and had another scan uh, and then it stood out. This has to be next on my purchase list and thank you very much for Nightsight for loaning it to me for a short period of time. I'm going to bring you a more in-depth review of this in the coming weeks, so stand by for that one. Now it's not all been about jolly outings, it's incredibly difficult going at the moment with the crops being so high but I have been out on Fox Patrol down at the golf course and this is how that session went. Arriving just before dark, I wanted to get my caller set up in the field and then go back to the bushes to hide just so that I could be in place just in case the fox happened to wander past. Now some of you may remember if you've been following the channel for a while, it was this particular driving range just two years ago that was absolutely humping with rabbits and I'll insert a little video clip of what it looked like when we first turned up. Now we've done a good job of removing a lot of the rabbits and I guess I've had a helping hand from these foxes but unfortunately they've been causing quite a lot of damage here on the golf course, particularly in the sand bunkers on the greens of the other side of the bank. So the task here is to remove the problem foxes. Now at the time of filming this particular segment I didn't actually have the thermal spotter with me so I was traditionally using the lamp and I caught a flash of eyes or what I thought was a flash of eyes over in the far corner so I quickly put the caller down and got up on the sticks. As you can see it wasn't particularly interested in the mouth squeak so I decided to come back, get the camcorder and go and stand further into the driving range. Well I've just got here. There's a young fox just the other side of the green here. So I need to get head up in this cover, back into the trees. Get the corner on, see if we can get it to come out. Didn't think I'd quite see one this quick. So, need to get set up.
roughly halfway into the driving range there's actually an advertising board although I happen to stand a little bit taller than it so so that I'm not silhouetted I actually decided to kneel for this one and this is what's quite good about the Primos trigger sticks they've got quite a wide spread and they will allow you to get quite low with the Icatec GC500 wailing away with rabbit distress as you can see it caught the attention of two of the cubs So at 160 yards I managed to down the first cub but for some reason pressed stop on the recording button so I didn't manage to capture the second shot on film. I actually clipped it with the first round but I managed to make up for it and definitely downed it with the third. See where they've been going through, that one was on his way back in the hole. If you can see, look, they're going through here. So, one here, another one here. So, two down to start with, that's a good start. stood up now because I don't need to be uh, necessarily silhouetted by anything it's getting quite dark now um, but I'm gonna keep calling because those those were two young cubs so there's bound to be some adults around here somewhere and maybe some more cubs um, so I'm gonna give it a little while keep calling and see what happens and if not we'll move on to location two uh, but two down straight away it's a great start in a bit. It was probably a good 20 to 30 minutes before cub number 3 showed up so what I decided to do was walk forward to that 160 marker to be able to take the shot from there to get that little bit closer. So it was worth waiting for that extra little bit of time. We actually ended up with three cubs on the deck. I'll be surprised if there's not a couple more cubs here, but I do have to move on. I've got another couple of farms to check where I've been told there is known fox activity. And with the rain that we've had over the last couple of weeks, I've not been able to get out, so I need to go and sort those out. But we'll make a return trip here in the coming weeks to see if we can mop up the rest of the family.
Right, so with decent thermal kit costing well into the thousands and night vision kit costing several hundreds of pounds, can today's modern lamps still hold a candle to all this technology? I take a look at the latest helping, the Javelot Pro from Olight, and to see what it can bring to the table. Just so you know, today this video goes live on the 28th of June and there is up to 40% off on the following kit. So please check the link in the description to get hold of yours at a discounted rate. All of the Olight products you'll get come packaged well, but when they come in a decent little flight case like this, you know it's got to be something that little bit extra special. The Javelot Pro is designed for both tactical shooters and hunters alike and I think that's pretty obvious as it comes out of the box. It comes with a very tactical style holster which has a decent D-ring a fast 5 volt uh, which is much bigger than the standard Olight charging charging kit for the magnetic tail switch that you get and then the torch itself which is made of T6 alloy very hard and it's IPX8 rated so it's both waterproof and drop resistant simply peel off the protective film remove the battery cover and you are ready to go Because the charging cable is a simple USB configuration, you can plug it into the wall and similarly you can plug it into power banks and also the USB port in your car. The charging cable will indicate red when the unit is charging and it will very conveniently light to green when you are ready to go. It takes around four and a half hours to charge up from an empty battery cell. Now if you're looking to get this light for the hunting scenario I suggest you buy the kit version and the difference between the two is you will get filters to be able to put onto the torch end changing it from white, green to red. You'll also get the figure of 8 clamp you can see in picture now uh, to be able to mount the torch to your rifle and you will also get a real smart magnetic tail switch with a thumb operated control that will affix to the stock for easy operation. Although the unit looks quite big, it's only 380 grams and it's quite well balanced so it's pretty good for lamping and for that you definitely want the filter. Once you've finished your lamping rounds and you want to put the torch onto the rifle, it literally takes around 20 seconds. Just simply tighten up the nut and you're ready to go and it pretty much holds it in a perfect place as long as you keep the torch nice and vertical straight away. Now here you can see that the Javelot Pro has a quite a concentrated beam in the middle with a half decent halo around it. The fence which is, you can just see in picture when I look through the scope here, which is a good way behind that 200 yard marker and that's pretty much, let's face it, further than you're going to want to be shooting at night time anyway. It's very clear indeed, so this is going to be a great little package when it comes to lamping. Well there you go, that's a little snippet of the Javelot Pro. Um, summary, can it be used for lamping? Absolutely, in fact, if you are gonna use it for lamping, I would recommend that you actually get the kit rather than just the torch only. Olight were kind enough to send me uh, the filters, but I think one of the things the kit comes with that is almost a necessity as a lamping product is the remote tail switch. So you've got a thumb operated control here to turn the torch simply on and off. Some of the real nifty features that I like about this product, the first of which is the actually sealed battery unit uh, and the magnetic charging cap. 
because you can actually charge it up on the fly. Lots of cars and trucks these days have a USB port in them so you can charge it up on the go. The integral battery indicator located in the on off switch here. When you've got 75% or more, it will indicate green, 75 down to 30% and it will light orange. And when you've only got 10 to 30% left, you'll get a red indicator. And finally, it will flash or blink red when it gets down to sub 10%. The run time's pretty good. Uh, we walked all over the golf course looking for rabbits to try and catch uh, on film and shoot at the same time. Rather difficult, unfortunately, and I'm afraid I've run out of time to be able to go and get you some more footage before this video needs to go out. But it will go for 130 minutes on the highest 2100 lumen setting, and I'm not sure as I know of another Lampin product capable of discharging that much power for that length of time. The filters are particularly good, they're easy to put on, and what I also like about them um, is that they are rubberized around the outside, so they act as an additional buffer and you're not going to damage the actual lens uh, whilst that's in use. It's also quite a bit lighter than you would think as well. I know it looks fairly substantial, but it feels very well balanced in the hand, and my arm wasn't aching during the lamping session that we had with it either. So there we go, that's the Olight Javlot Pro. Click the link in the description to go check it out. And also don't forget to check it out regularly for any other sales that Olight have on. I'll update it as and when I get the new links. Thank you very much for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos. Take care, stay safe, and as always, happy shooting.